the next criminal mastermind. All right, guys, welcome to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I am, of course, Josh Williams, joined here by Case McKinney. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm trying to get by. You know, the movie life is hard right now. So, it's uh, extremely hard, but we're getting closer and closer to hopefully theaters releasing. Uh, if everybody who's watching this review, keep a lookout on my our movie news segment. We're going to be having that up on the channel today as well. Uh, but we're not right now. We are here to give you our real time review of Artemis Fowl. Now, Artemis Fowl was directed by Kenneth Branagh, and it stars. Let's see who we got here: uh, Ferda Shaw, Laura Mc- McDonald, Judy Dench, Josh Gad, Nanzo Anazi, Tamara Smart, and Colin Farrell. Those are the big names. There's a few others probably I'm going to be missing, but uh, who? Now, before we get into this one, I, I gotta <laughs> say, I have never read the books. Oh, and also, I think that's important. That's an important point to make. Yeah, I have never read the books. And, oh, and by the way, guys, if you happen to hear a baby in the background, anybody listening, and Casey, I'm pulling double duty. Got my daughter. Um, she's her room's right there. So I'm also pulling double duty. Mine's upstairs on her. Yeah, watching YouTube videos though, so I think yeah. we're okay. So I got my got my camera in her room watching her. So make sure she doesn't get in any trouble. But that way, if anybody hears a baby in the background, that's just my daughter right there. But anyways, no. So let's get back to the Artemis file. Now, yeah, cause have you read the books? I have not. Um, I've, I've right. listened to some people talk about these books, and uh, it's, as seems to be the story with every single time uh, a, a movie like this based on a book mm. comes out, it, it just did not do the books justice at all from what I've heard. Yeah, I from what I hear too. To that. I, haven't, I haven't read them, uh, but if it did, I, I don't want to read the books. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, we have the books here. Tina, my wife, has read them when she was a kid. Yeah. She loved them. But that's what I'm hearing too is uh, that the book, the pe- pe- fans of the people, uh, people who are fans of the book did not like this one. So, but for basing on us as movie reviewers, I'll let you go first, uh, Casey. What score would you give it? And then what would what would you start off by saying what you thought? I mean, I, I, I'm not sure who this movie is for. I think that might be the problem. I'm not in the demographic here. I was going to sit down with my daughter who is six to, to watch this. She got busy, so I sat down and watched it because we were going to do this review. And I got maybe 20 minutes in, and I was like, yeah, this wouldn't have held her attention. Um, so, and I mean, there are some jarring scenes. I, I don't want to call it, you know, terrible, but, you know, there's some some stuff on the screen that I think she probably wouldn't have been okay with. But So I don't know if this is for, like, a, a preteen or like I, I i don't know what, what do you think who is this who's yeah, the yeah. demographic for this movie because it's not me and i don't think it's my daughter who's in that younger age range it's got to be like preteen, right i would assume it's for like preteen and like people like just getting into that teenhood that's what i would assume but that's just the thing that these movies these books came out so long i don't even know if the kids who are going to see this movie the preteens have read the books and maybe there may be some but not all you know so i I honestly don't know who this is for. Um, that's the troubling part for me, honestly, is but basing on the film itself, I gotta say this movie's a mess. Yeah, there's, there's so much so much going on, there's so much wrong, there's mm-hmm. I, I mean, I you know, I hate to, to do that, but it just it didn't catch me with anything. Josh Gad was doing his best to try and, and be Josh Gad here. He what was up with the few, voice? I don't know. He had a few funny moments, but outside of that, I mean, you, when your main character just isn't likable at all, I understand that he's he's even less likable in the books from what I've heard. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of just sort of accepted that way, that he's got sort of a, a cockiness or a swagger to him. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I had no care for this kid. What's I think, you know, there's no one in this movie that I really, really cared for, and that doesn't help at all. No, it really doesn't. And that's the other thing, too. Um, I don't want to, you know, shit on this kid too much. Yeah. But he, this is his first feature film. It's actually his first film ever. I don't know how they found him, but I got to say, man, wow, he is he was not good. He's charisma and, free. Huh? He's charisma free. He's got nothing. Yeah, I don't he's, like... He really had nothing. And the, at the beginning, his, his smugness was good. He'd be good as a villain. I will say that. But not as a kid who's supposed to be an antagonist, who's supposed to have some some swagger like he's supposed to have this swagger but he doesn't that charisma is just not there and even the acting chops are not there because 
I will say, like, I was very disappointed in their choice. I don't know why. I mean, they said nothing bad for the kid. I hope all the best for him. I hope he does better in the future. But you got to think, some of these other previous teen book franchises had somebody of name. Everyone, Oz, Oz, like Oz of Butterfield, for instance, for Ender's Game, which came out to be very popular. He had he had at least three movies under his belt before he did Ender's Game. Yeah. And same with, uh, same with Jennifer Lawrence with The Hunger Games. She had... Uh, Winner's Bone under her belt and X-Men First Class beforehand. She had time to hone in her craft. This kid, he just, they, they must like just plucked him from a group and, hey kid, you're going to lead a big franchise for us. It doesn't work for him. It doesn't I, work. I think they've got their eyes on the franchise before anything else and everyone wants to hit that next big franchise. That's the thing. And I mean, I, I don't know that that's where we're, we're looking at going as a as a movie going audience with mm -hmm. trying to find the next thing that's going to keep people coming back. I get it. You, you want that, uh, hit that gold mine. But, um, I, like I said, I haven't read the book, so I can't speak to whether or not the, the source material is there for a, for a gold mine. But, um, as far as this movie goes, it's, it's not, I don't anticipate them. I, I think it was a blessing for them to drop this on Disney plus because, yeah. I don't know. Theatrically, it probably would have just been slammed pretty hard. I mean, it probably would have made more money. This is true, just in ticket sales. You know. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, you're always going to make more money unless, you know, as opposed to dropping it to your pay service. You're, mm -hmm. you know, basically giving it to people for free. But, I mean, I think this one would have went through the ringer a lot harder than it has. I mean, mm -hmm. you messaged me about watching this one, and I went, well, I heard it's terrible, but, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a go. It's and, really, it's uh, it's really popular, and a lot of people are wondering how it is because yes, it is free available on Disney Plus. Well, you have to have a subscription yeah. to Disney Plus, but you know that at least people because I know there's probably some apprehension of some people if they even want to, even if it's free, if they should watch it or not. This is waste, you know, spend their time watching it. It's only an hour and a half, or no, it's, it's two hours, but it feels like it's missing at least a half hour of stuff. There were so many moments in this movie where I was like, okay, this had to have cut some stuff because the screenplay yes. makes no sense. There were moments where character, characters... Just appears. Not, yeah, disappears, but also, like, characters' um, moments change. Like, there's a minute, there's a part in the second act, including D Judy Dench and her lieutenant. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, Briar something. The guy who was in the... Uh, he was, he was her, basically her second hand, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, her... Something happens where her whole squadron turns on her, but then they go back and, you know, they're with her again in a very short amount of time. Yeah. No, it just made no sense as far as the screenplay is concerned. And it just made me wonder, there had to have more to this because I have, there's no way actors like Colin Farrell, Judy Dench, um, and I would even, uh, I don't know, maybe Josh Gabb, but definitely Judy Dench and Colin Farrell, they had to have looked at this as, oh, this is pretty good. If they would have saw what it would become, they probably wouldn't have it. Yeah, I think Josh Gad's pretty much just signed on to anything Disney wants him to do. But, yeah. I mean, he's, he's getting that Olaf money, so uh, and that's fine. he I mean, owes he's... them. But, I, I don't mean, there, there were certain, even when they brought in, like, late in the first act, brought in his cousin. Like, there's just, all of a sudden, she's there. Yeah. Like, it's a quick introduction. This is her. She's here now. Well, okay. But, I mean that seemed rushed and I feel like there's more there to it and I imagine if you read the book there's more there mm -hmm. uh, to that character and, and bringing her in at this point she just sort of seems like a shoehorned in you know character, character yeah. uh, you know checking certain boxes and she's in here now so I don't know it was a mess yeah and even that for me like structurally speaking I did not like like there are certain movies where having a narrator works it's fine and there are certain movies where I feel like a narrator would have been great this when they had Josh Gad just kind of telling us the story without really showing us, you know, taking the time and showing us to having a strong screenplay, instead of just regurgitating everything on the screen like, oh, he's this person's a badass or this person's so smart and this person this and it's like, show me, don't tell me that it'd yeah. be so much better to show me instances where they do that, and it just it really boggled down the film for me. I uh, we didn't give our scores in the beginning. I'm probably gonna give this one a solid probably three out of ten. This movie is pretty bad. It's a mess of a film. They were, I think they were, they should have been lucky that they released this uh, you know, on Disney Plus because I feel like if they got released in theaters, it would have really lost them a ton of money. I mean, they're already kind of losing money, anyways, but at least with this, they like, might you be know, saving a little face this way. Yeah, they're not, saving. Like said, they're not getting dragged through the, 
the ringer on, you know, because, you know, it's the thing. It happens every weekend after a new movie release. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is what came out this weekend, and here's what it's sitting on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone sort of, it's in the zeitgeist. Everyone knows what's going on. I yeah. think a movie like this just sort of gets released and, and floats out into the ether, and nobody is the wiser if it gets bad reviews. If it get you know, if it came out and was, you know, 90% and, every, and everyone thought it was great, you'd hear all about it. But since yep. it's put it under the radar... No, it just it there. It's out there. It's gone. Your kid can scroll across it and watch it one day if they want to when they're scrolling through Disney Plus. That's all the further is going. What review would you? What uh, score would you give it? Honestly, I'm right there with you. I mean, you're uh, you're a ten star guy. I'm a five star guy. But I'm I'm right there with you. I'd be sitting somewhere around three or you know two out of five. So three out of three or four out of ten. Like, yeah, not good. Not good. No, no I don't recommend. No, I don't recommend it all. I mean, save your time because I remember at the end of the film, I just kind of stood there. I can't do this with my my microphone here, but I'm just, I stood there at my after the movie's over, like on my couch, just like I need some aspirin. Like this movie it's makes not... no sense. Yeah, <laughs> they I got to, to the I, end. I was just. Mm. I gotta say, Disney, they need to start upping their game as far as the quality of their teen books and also their live actions. They're not on a greatest track record right now. It's okay. It's you know, it's it's perfectly fine to be like have them release, but it's, it's people want quality films, not just something like oh they they made this cool. They actually people well, want something of quality. Part of the thing is you know you release a movie like this in the theater if you can find the right time. There are no other kids movies out. People are gonna go. Yeah, eventually it's gonna get the bad reviews, but people are still gonna go. They're still gonna make some money off of it. Um, quality isn't necessarily a, a high point for for some of these kids movies. It helps. It definitely helps. Yeah, but I I think that's what they were going for here, and, and sort of lost out. Definitely. All right, guys, that'll do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. What did you think of Artemis Fowl? If you have watched it, and if you did, I am extremely sorry. Yeah. Uh, leave your comments in the section below. Let us know whether you liked it or not, and give us your score out of ten. Also, if you like what you watched, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, so you can receive more of our various content in the future. Also, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and start us. The links are in the description below, as always. That's all for today. Again, I'm Josh Williams, and this is Casey McKinney, and thank you for keeping it real with Real Time.